Now I spent a long time coming with these water holes and creating tank water holes for deer. And I think there's a few advantages of them, but we really need to talk about the size and we'll get to that. Um, the size, what's worked for us over the year. We have 20 years experience of putting these water hole tanks in. And the first one we started with was a half barrel, 55 gallon drum. So we're using 27 and a half gallons. And we quickly learned that that wasn't even close to enough, even though they were free. Uh, free is not always better. But uh, outside of that, we'll talk about the size and what we think is optimum, which is this right here, um, here in a second. But let's talk about some of the water hole rules. Uh, for one, we want this in a remote location. This feature is a very low risk to deer. So I do not want to add it to a food source that has a high risk to deer. That's why they only hit there an hour before dark, typically on a daily basis, where bucks are hitting this all day. Does, fawns, they hit this all times of the day because it's very secure to them. I lower the level of security for a water hole when I add it to that food over there. So that's one great reason for keeping them separate. Not to mention, this is a great daytime cruising area. That open food source over there is not. So I really like separating these, these water holes. I wanna make sure it's by a bow stand. We shot two bucks in this location last year. And that was really critical. I never want a water hole drawing deer away from my bow stands and I can't hunt it. If there's no bow stand on it, that's a really bad thing. You have to have very defined wind. Here we know in the morning, the wind's gonna come over that rise right there and it's gonna head back up that draw over there. So very easy to say, we can hunt this with this wind, even though it's hill country and we're down low and figure that out. You have to have a critter stick in here so that squirrels, and other small mammals, chipmunks, can get out of here if they fall in and not sit here and rot and die. That's a really bad thing. Don't worry about mosquitoes, who cares? The mosquitoes that are, that are growing in this little water hole area, that's natural out in the woods for actual mud holes to have mosquitoes in them. It's not really a big deal. I wouldn't add any chemicals to try to get rid of them. I want things more natural um, out here. Now, no dry and cracking mud. So that means that there's a lower chance of EHD. Um, that's what propagates, that's where the midge develops and propagates within that mud. The bottom line is, talking about the size of the tank, it's critical that you understand the sizing of these tanks and why. 27 and a half gallon tank, not enough. We've gone to 80 gallon tanks, not enough. There's even some out there that are 80 gallons and they're only 12 inches deep, 100 gallons, 12, 15 inches deep, and that's too shallow because you get evaporation on. These right here, whether we use a 150 gallon tank, even a 100 gallon tank is 24 inches deep. The 150 is 25. The 300 gallon, which is this, this size right here, is 25 inches deep, just a lot bigger. And so what we find is that with the water holes, when you get around 100 gallons, we're finding that during drought, during the season, and decent deer use, then we're finding about 100 gallons every three to four weeks is lost. And so if you have a 100 gallon tank, it dries up in three or four weeks, deer stop using it, it takes two or three weeks to reestablish that pattern of use. Tried 150 gallons, obviously a lot better, but with drought, again, after a month, there's only eight inches of water down the bottom and they're having a hard time. We've actually had deer step in the 150s or get down on their knees, but still they're having a hard time getting that water. When we have this 300 gallon tank, which we started to migrate to throughout the years, back to all of them we replaced in, in 300 this year. We, I think we did seven or eight last year. Hey, thanks for watching the video and we'll be right back, but this is very important. This is a very important announcement. We have our Camp Kicking Bear event. We have it on Father's Day. It's more of a habitat day. We're gonna see a feature of habitat improvements, how they will all relate to a bedding area, a water hole, food plot, bedding point, morning stands, evening stands, and then we get to take a tour around the majority of the property too. Bottom line is $350 per person times 50 people. We highly encourage you to bring your kids. After all, it's Father's Day. 50, those 50 spots always sell out very fast. On that same day, it's from 10 o'clock to four o'clock in the afternoon. We have speaking events. All my sponsors kick in for that. So we'll literally be giving away a Matthews boat, a ghillie blind. And so one person will win each of those. For about 13, 14 people will win really good prizes. I could list them all, but check it out. We also have our $100 times 100 hunt raffle to a lucky hunter that'll come hunt with us the end of September for three nights. So really check out all that information. Look at the link in the description. You can ask Jesse, she'll help you out with any scheduling of that and uh, look forward to seeing you guys there. It's a great event. Every dime that's earned goes directly to Camp Kicking Bear and even a little extra on top of that. So. Look forward to seeing you there. 100 gallons is only down about eight inches. 200 gallons down about 15 inches. 
Deer can easily get at it. They can step in it and drink. They can get down on their knees still, but more importantly, they can step in. They can get the water really easily, even if it's just an inch of water down the bottom. This is that tank size where you get to where we don't want to come down here in this really remote area. So this is that tank size that we found. We can put water in here in September and it'll last all the way until it freezes in December. And you see, we haven't added water this year. This is a new water hole last year. We shot the two bucks out of here, Jen and I. And then we had filled this, let it go into the fall, rain, snow, moisture, stayed here throughout the spring, and this is what we have during the summertime. Now at this point, I like coming in here and raking it out, getting the vegetation, debris. One water hole in Coon Valley, we have walnuts in. We wanna get out every year, sticks, leaves, just get it out so it's somewhat clean. But bottom line is, size of water hole, don't be fooled that, you know, a 250 gallon tank would be okay, but not if it's 12 inches deep, like a pool, a kiddie pool. Kiddie pool sounds good, but they don't last like a Rubbermaid. We've never had a Rubbermaid's fail, and I've been doing this for 20 years. So, and, and not even just Rubbermaid, just a cattle tank, you know, cattle pond. We've never had them break when we're digging them in here. We really like to dig them below ground level. This one's actually starting to rise up a little bit. We could actually put some grade soil around here so that it funnels in a little bit better. But we can do a little, little get, get a little bit lazy when it comes to the 300s because we know if we fill them up one time, we're good to go through the season and they'll continue drawing deer, not dry out. And when it comes to your water hole tank size, really, really important that you consider these gallons, what we're going through. I had clients last year that have these flatter open water holes that are 12 inches deep, 15 inches deep, 80 to 100 gallons, and they're drying out in two weeks in heavy deer use, and that's just not enough. We experience drought for sometimes four or five weeks at a time in the fall, and that's not a bad thing, it's just the way it is. So really consider 300 gallons, 250 gallons, consider the overall depth because the larger and more surface area there is, the more evaporation there is. This 24, 25 inches seems to be a good balancing point. And if you can't afford something this big, these are about $250, 260. They have a 110 gallon tank at TSC. What I like about that is it's 22 inches high. So a 100 gallon Rubbermaid is 24 inches high, but you're 10 gallons less. Where this is 22 inches high, 100, uh, 10 gallons more than the 100. So you get a bigger top to the opening, but not too great. It's still 22 inches deep. And that one, if you fill it, keep your eye on it. Uh, we've had times where we haven't had to fill them for two years, and other times you have to fill them twice in, the, in a hunting season because it's so droughty. Um, but if you keep an eye on it, a 110-gallon tank is a bare minimum uh, in the best of conditions. But when it comes to the perfect size, I think we found it. We're, fi we're coming up with a way this year where we'll try to heat these with a cattle tank heater and we have certain ways we're going to do so uh non-solar panel we found the solar panel and battery bank that would take is just just incredible but what we found is we enjoy a lot watching wildlife and all winter long if this is open we couldn't do it down here we're not uh we're not near any kind of electrical source but keeping these warmer and actually open during the winter time every critter in the woods will will hit these and we have a reveal camera right over there by Dylan. We love watching our water holes because of the hawks, owls, fox, bobcat, coyote, raccoon, possum, deer, birds, everything that comes to it all season long. So aside from the deer hunting and make sure you get the right tank size and understand that, uh, that ratio of height to depth and width, then boy what a great spot to watch all wildlife which is what we're about out here all year long now i don't know if you've checked out our main website lately whitehabitatsolutions.com but we've really had a lot going on including hats books our web class and certainly our new seed company whs wildlife blends when you click on seed on our site it'll take you right to our brand new site for the seed company, we have all 12 blends available. So check it all out though. I encourage you, I appreciate you checking it out. Whether you buy anything or not, really appreciate you visiting the site and uh, seeing what's going on and continue to watch because we have big things coming later this year.